So we know, scientifically speaking, we know that if there was an oil spill, it would be pretty bad, and we would have oil throughout the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Now, what does that mean to us in PEI, and how would that affect us? Okay, first of all, the animals. Um, you know, everyone, a lot of you have probably seen pictures like this before. Animals covered in oil, like oh my god. Okay, well, well, it mean that this means something. Um, have you guys ever been near? your parents when they put gas in the car, when they put gas in their lawnmower? Yeah. You know how like it stinks? Yeah. Well, oil is something that's very bad for you. It's a toxic substance, which means if you drink it, you'll die. Um, if you get it on your skin, it'll burn very badly. Um, so if you look at an ant, well, animal, whereas we see oil and we go, oh, that water's not supposed to be that color. Maybe I shouldn't touch it. Not all animals are smart enough or even able to avoid oil. When they see oil coming, they don't know what it is. So a fish that would, that would see a big patch of black probably wouldn't notice it's oil. They just swim through it. Um, you know, birds that land in oil will get covered in oil. Um, and that's, that will eventually very quick, can, can very quickly kill those animals. If you look at just, just fish, for example, do you guys know how fish breathe? Yeah. How? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they have their gills. Okay, water goes in through their mouth, comes out through their gills. Um, their gills are the same thing as our lungs. They breathe by taking oxygen out of the water that goes through their mouth. Well, if the fish opens its mouth and takes in oil, it's like us putting oil straight into our lungs. That would kill us. Like that, we couldn't be able to. We wouldn't be able to breathe, and the oil would probably burn our lungs. It's the same thing with a fish with gills. Um, so it would be any kind of animal or plant that would be come in contact and get covered by that oil would either get very, very sick but, or probably die. Now, we have a lot of animals in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, from really, really big, like whales, to less big, to different whales. And I was too lazy to get pictures of all the animals because there's a lot of them. Specifically, there's over 2,000 species of uh, of animals that live in the Gulf. Now, species means different types of animals, like dogs are a species, cats are a species. There's like a zillion species of birds and a billion species of fish. So there's two different types of species in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Multiply that by millions and millions of individuals per species. You're looking at a lot of stuff that lives in the Gulf of St. Lawrence that would be affected <laughs> by that oil. Um, in a lot of cases, I don't know if you guys ever talked about like uh, animals that are endangered or extinct, that kind of thing, but um, a lot of the animals that live in the Gulf of St. Lawrence are already having a tough time being healthy. There aren't, that, there aren't a lot, a lot of those species, there aren't that many of those animals left because of the fact that we do a lot of fishing, and you could argue that we fish too much for the amount of fish that's in the Gulf, and we pollute. Unfortunately, um, the Gulf of St. Lawrence is felt, filled that alone is filled up by the whole St. Lawrence River. And there's a lot of industry there, and there's a lot of pollution that comes out. So, so we're already kind of giving those, those animals a, a tough time. So do we really want to give them oil on top of that? Um, but it's not just the animals that live in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. What happens to birds in the fall? They migrate. Where do they go? They go to the center half. Yeah, they go. They're like, winter? Forget this. And they leave. Right? And when it gets nice again, they come back. That's called migration. Um, fish do that too. So it's not just the animals that live in the Gulf, it's animals that'll, that'll swim through the Gulf um, that can be affected as well. And some fish come to the Gulf specifically to reproduce. So um, just like how birds lay eggs, well fish will lay eggs too. But they tend to be pretty, pretty picky in terms of where they lay their eggs. So some, a, lot of, a, lot of those two, a lot of those species of fish uh, and different animals will come to the Gulf of St. Lawrence just to lay their eggs. So um, that would be even more dangerous because we're not just attacking the adults with the oil. The oil is, hit, is hurting the, the little babies and their eggs. So it would have a huge impact on the population of those fish. Um, and the other thing to, to remember is animals are a renewable resource. Anyone know what that means, a renewable resource? As opposed to a non-renewable resource? Just that? Oh, well, it's that 
they can come back after a while. Exactly. If, you, if we decide that we want to build a house and we cut a bunch of trees down to make the wood into our house, well, after 20 some odd years, more trees will grow. So if we're careful, the trees will always be there and we can always use them up. We can always use them, let them grow back, use them again, let them grow back, and that can go on forever and ever and ever. Fish are the same. That's why we've been fishing for as long as we've been humans. Hey, there's fish. When you go in, we fish them, we eat the fish that we need, and then the fish that we haven't eaten have some babies, and then there's more fish. Yay! Um, that's a renewable resource. It's always going to be there for us. Whereas oil is a non-renewable resource. Once we've taken all the oil out of the ground, well, we'll have to wait for millions of years for us to be turned into oil the same way the dinosaurs were turned into oil. Not very helpful for us. Um, anybody here have friends, family, uncles, brothers, sisters that do that, that fish? Or even know someone who fishes? Okay, pretty much everybody here. Um, well, if there's an oil spill and a lot of the fish that we, that we fish die, what happens to the fishermen? Yes? They don't have any jobs. They don't have work to do. And we're not just talking about fish, we're talking about crabs and lobsters and some people whale, some people hunt seal. That, that entire industry, everybody who lives on, depends on taking stuff out of the, out of the sea and selling it, they, don't not, they, they could be greatly, greatly affected. Okay? And it's not just for a year or two because um, Oil, I'm going to mention this later, but oil stays in the water for a long, long, long time. There was an oil spill in Alaska in 1988, I think, the Exxon Valdez, big boat that crashed. There's still oil from that spill all over the, the shores in Alaska. So it could affect fishing in PI and throughout the Maritimes for a very long time. Another thing that PI depends, well, PI, you want to, make, you, you want to have a job in PI, the three big things are fishing, Tourism and farming, or teaching. Um, tourism is another big thing that, that would be affected. Uh, people come to PI because they like to see these sceneries. They like to see the red shores, and they like to see the seas and the waves. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, well, if this scene is covered in oil, no one's going to come see it. No one's going come, to come to the Maritimes to see islands that are covered in oil. So not only an oil spill would not only affect our fishing industry, it would also affect our tourism industry, which are two of the big, big things that give us adults jobs and will someday give a lot of you guys jobs. Okay. <clears throat> now a couple, of, a couple of facts about the spill just to, to kind of like wrap things up. Um, there's a, anybody here know what conflict of interest means? Nobody? Conflict of interest?